Well, the Beijing Olympics has brought together not only the world's best athletes, but world's biggest companies. How their advertising and marketing campaigns perform on the Olympic stage may be worth hundreds of millions of dollars in future sales and deals. And making sure they have the right strategy is crucial. To look at the do's and don'ts of advertising in Asia, I'm joined by Dr. Julian Kaler, who's been researching the subject. So, Julian Kaler, looking at the Olympics, one of the biggest international events in the world, are Western companies missing their opportunity and making the mistake of playing on Asian nationalism instead of relying on Western traits? Uh, Whitney, it's great to be here. Good morning. Um, I think Western companies actually understand that these games are really about uh, China and the celebration of uh, what China is achieving and uh, has achieved. And um, I think Western companies in many ways are, are playing on that sentiment, are, are really stroking that uh, national sentiment. I think one of the most surprising things to me is uh, McDonald's, um, where if you uh, hear the slogan of McDonald's in China in uh, the advertisements that are running in Chinese, it actually says, I love it uh, when China wins. So it's actually quite interesting and fascinating to see these Western companies that are really stroking that uh, national sentiment. It is interesting. Uh, however, in contrast, Chinese companies, they're overlooking Chinese nationalism, opting for a more uh, global angle, and they're claiming they're, they're bigger than just China. Right. Um, I think they're one of the most interesting examples is, uh, is Lenovo. Uh, you might have seen the, the commercials for uh, Lenovo. Um, they really don't say much about being Chinese. They, they really try to appear a global company and uh, they're really one of the companies that is spending large amounts of money to really look like uh, like a global brand like a global company and they don't really say anything about being chinese but i think you have to look at this at lenovo in the context of this chinese national sentiment because in many ways being a global success having that global exposure for lenovo is a way to really earn a lot of credits uh, at home so in many ways by being a global success, success, Lenovo becomes uh, really uh, a great brand for Chinese who become really proud of having a global brand like Lenovo. What other examples have we seen? Well, I think, uh, again, um, you know, one of the most interesting things for me in this uh, Olympics, in the Olympic ceremony, was uh, was the former gold medalist uh, Li Ning. Uh, now, I don't know if you viewers know this, but Li Ning is also one of the most famous uh, brands of so uh, sportswear in, uh, in China. And I think given that uh, Adidas uh, was the official sponsor for the, the sportswear uh, for the Olympics, it was very interesting to see Li Ning uh, there really uh, stealing the show in many ways and really showing the, these, these brands like the Li Ning brand uh, coming and, uh, and really trying to compete with, uh, with Western brands. Would you say that uh, given that the Chinese companies are, are sort of not focusing on Chinese nationalism, that it's necessary for regional uh, companies to, in order to compete with Western companies, that they sort of homogenize themselves then? Um, uh you know, I think for uh, for the Western companies, uh, you know, in many ways, so you've seen that they're really playing on the nationalism. Uh, but in many ways, I think uh, people in China are still uh, still see the success uh, in the West as as a badge of success, as being part of basically a global business community. I mean, I think uh, one of the interesting examples in our research that we found was uh, a story that uh, people told us is people didn't really pay uh, attention to the film director. Ang Lee before he won uh, the Oscars in, uh, in, in Hollywood. He was the director of uh, Crouching uh, Tiger. Now, this tells you that really uh, all the various Chinese nationalism being successful abroad and having that badge of success of being successful in the West still uh, carries a lot of weight, I would say. Okay, let's move on. In your research, you've identified how advertisers sell Asia to Asian consumers. It needs to be very different to how Asia is marketed to Western consumers. Why is that and, and what are the differences? Well, I think that, that was one of, really one of the most fascinating things uh, that we found was um, there are really two versions of Asia and one is the version of Asia that is sold to Western consumers. And I would say that that version of Asia has a lot to do with 
the way Asia was uh, in the past. So it's, uh, it's about Asia in, uh, in a colonial time. It's uh, the world of geishas and the world of Suzy Wong, basically, of silk outfits. And that's a very different Asia that the, the Asians uh, seem to respond to, where if you speak to a young person in uh, Beijing or in Tokyo today, they're not going to be as interested in the past. They're going to tell you basically that what they're interested in is, is today and the future, that time is now and that Asia has arrived on the world stage. And they're interested in that story, not so much the story about Asia's past, really. We're seeing a, a new sense of pride in Asia and more cultural exchanges between Asian nations than ever before. So can you tell us the implications of this? Right. I think uh, one of the most interesting uh, implications here for Western companies, especially in foreign companies, is they have to realize that uh, although being from the West is important, people in Asia are really not that much in love anymore with uh, this idea of the West. I mean, there is admiration for the West, but there is really a lot of things that are going on within the region. So, so actually, if you look at Chinese television, for example, you see a large amount of uh, Korean TV series. Uh, and you have really a, a big success of uh, Japanese and South Korean uh, television and cinema all over uh, Asia, which really tells you a lot about the things that are going on within Asia and that there are a lot of uh, intercultural exchanging uh, between Asia. So, in other words, for, for a company, it's really important to see uh, those types of exchanges to understand uh, how consumers uh, view products and brands. All right. Unfortunately, Dr. Julian Keller, we've run out of time. We'll have to leave it there, but thank you. All right. Thank you very much.